Hello, today I'm going to show you a financial tutorial on how to do micro valve in valve workup. This is a magna valve, and we'll show you how you can evaluate sizing and new LVOT clearance. So, this is the micro software package. If you don't have that, you'll need to purchase that as part of your software. So you can see that this is the prosthetic mitral valve located here. And so once you click at the mitral interface, you put a dot in the center across the prosthetic valve and you go to a mitral assessment. Now this is Fremencio Heart version 10.0. So it's a bit different if you have a different version or either newer or older version. But in this version, what you need to do is first, you make sure this yellow line is cutting across the LV apex. You might need to make some adjustment. And secondly, you want to make sure that your valve is not canted. Now, remember, as just like any prosthetic valve evaluation, you want to make sure you drop the gain to avoid booming artifacts such that you won't underestimate the measurements. So first, you're going to define the mitral analyst. In this case, it will actually be the prosthetic valve at the inflow. So you, what you do, you just start either top or bottom, and you just click along the surgical valve frame at the analyst area. So unlike the aortic valve, where you do three dots, you're going to need to rotate, and they'll show you multiple dots automatically. And once you have that, then you have to fine-tune that area. So let's edit that. And you can see that, remember, a surgical valve has got a little bit of scallop contour. What you want to make, try to do is try to make it into a flat line. You can see it's a little bit wavy right now, so you have to refine that. So you need to do is just pick an area it will allow you to have a projection. That will be a bit more sym symmetric. Because the projected diameter is a be a little bit different. Sometimes you can try to make it into a straight line as well. And you can see that here. And you can see here, if I magnify this and drop the gain again, this is kind of where the inflow, and you can see that you want to have these dots at the inner diameter. That's kind of like the internal diameter. And you can see that it should be circular, but sometimes it can be a little elliptical, particularly if the valve's a bit deformed. You don't have to have so many dots. For example, if you have a circular structure in a prosthetic valve, is, you can eliminate some of the dots. You can see now it's a pretty good projection. You can see it's wavy, or you can draw a straight line, depending on how it projects. So once it's done, you confirm, and then you look at your new LVOT. So you can go click Define. The new LVOT measurement is very similar to your aortic valve measurement done in Tower. So you can see that here, Obviously, you don't have any calcification here unless you have aortic stenosis and you go bisect the left sinus and you put a dot at the base. You count the clock with the open red circle and you put a dot at the base in the top left panel with the green dot, that's the base of the right sinus. And then you go to the non sinus again and do the same. Now, sometimes you may have prosthetic aortic valve here on the aortic valve position, then you might just need to do the segmentation in a similar way by getting to the base of the surgical valve. You can see I'm fine tuning right now by going up and down to make sure you're at the base of the sinus. You can see that's pretty good. This is pretty good. So now here it's a little tricky. You have to actually manually adjust the center line to be parallel almost to the septum because that's kind of will help you 
measure the new LVOT accurately. So you can, because remember the valve, virtual valve is going to be sitting right here where the balloon expandable valve across the prosthetic mitral valve. And then here you want to make sure you're center at 90 degrees off. So this line remains center. You can see that here on the closer to the LVOT and then closer to the ventricle. So once you do that, you confirm, and then you look at the new LVOT. But first, let's look at, you can see this is a free chamber view. This is the new LVOT line that we got. This is the aortic annulus. And so now what you do is you have to manually go to zero where we trace the annular plane. Make sure here in the distance is 0, 0.0. 0. And then you bring your solid blue dot and cross at the Mercedes sign here, which is the center line of the aortic annulus. And you can see that here. By doing so, then you basically cut across the aortic mitral curtain. And then when you measure the measurement here and the aortic mitral angle and how it looks here, you have a true free chamber view. So once I do that, I click right click, I can show info. Now you see a number of lines here. So this was meant to be, this yellow line is perpendicular to this AP line. So the AP dimension here, this is trigonal and trigonal, but it's not really trigonal because this is a prosthetic valve. So you can see how it's perpendicular. And then I usually draw this custom line to overlay with the AP line. So now you have a AP diameter. So you can see here, this is a likely a 27 millimeter surgical valve because the inner diameter is on 26. And then what you do, you would then overlay a virtual valve. You click edit. If you put a 29 in, you'll be 22.5, so I say 22. And then you'll be 29. 29. And then once you have the virtual valve, you right click the ping dot here, snap to valve, and that gives you the balloon expandable valve position right to the surgical valve. Now, it's important to have the surgical valve pole, stamp pose at the bottom. You have to look up at the valve in valve app by Vini Bapat on the mitral valve in valve app, look at the bottom of the commercial pulse because particularly in the manner by which the bovine pericardial valve, the leaflets extend all the way to the bottom of the commercial pulse. But in a porcine pericardial, uh, sorry, porcine valve, the leaflets are actually shorter. So your LVOT clearance might actually be better than you think. But to be more conservative, you put it at the inflow of the, so outflow of the balloon expandable valve against the commercial pulse here, which you can see right here. You go back to the 0, 0, and so I would take a snapshot so that you can have these measurements in play. And you can always put a valve in there. This is a 29 millimeter inside 26 millimeter frame. And then once you do that, then you do your here, you have the aortic mitral angle, this is angle two. You go from here to the intersection of this annular plane that we derived. This is 125. And you can see that here. And then next is the LVOT. So let me just delete this. To avoid confusion. And what you do is take the parallax out of this virtual cylinder with a balloon expandable valve. And so now what you need to look at is this is the analyst and you go on the LVOT line. And this is the smallest area of this. And you go to right click on the top left panel in the polygon. And you trace out the blue area that represents the actual valve. So you can see the new LVOT around is close to 300 millimeters square. 
that should not have any problem with LVOT clearance and you can fine tune that as well. Now, if you want to show people how or where the annual LVOT is calculated, you can actually go to a line tool, and just draw a line in this section because sometimes it's confusing about where exactly did you measure the LVOT? Is it higher up in, towards the analyst or further down? Because remember, the ventricle opens up as you go further down towards the LV cavity and it gets smaller closer to the LVOT, but there's going to be an area which is a narrower. So you can just draw a line of any length. There's no definition of what length you need to draw. And what the, ish, the reason we're doing that is if you click the screenshot, you can see how it draws a line across so you know Where's the new VOT cut line? I think that's what I call it. And then when you show the new LVOT measurement here, you'll be able to show new LVOT at that particular line. Now remember the LVO, new LVOT changes across the systolic cycle. So depending on what is ancestrally, early systole, or mid-systole, you should you note that and that will impact on your calculation evaluation of LVOT obstruction. So after this, I will typically go back to the mitro view. And what I do is go to the bottom rendering and you can go actually at a hockey puck view. And what it's showing you is essentially the prosthetic valve and the aortic analyst relationship. And you can actually take the virtual valve out and show some CM angle in a more concrete manner. So again, drop the game. You can see this patient had a posterior map, but if you zoom in here, you can see at this view where you take the parallax out completely, it's a very steep angle. So obviously it's not a usable angle from a fluoroscopic standpoint, but as you rotate this and you line up, so this is RL 46 total 11, so this, you can use it as a potential RAO view for valve implantation. As you go overlap more, obviously you can go more in the LVOT view. So you just try to find a sweet spot where you have the least steep CRM angle for your valve deployment such that the surgical valve will not have parallax. So let's take a look at the report. You can see what I've done. Essentially, you have your valve size and measurements, the aorta mitral angle, and see how it looks visually on the free chamber view. You have the other free chamber view showing the cut plane of how you measure the neo LVOT, which I show you how it's done by doing the polygon tracing along the Neo LVOT area, and then a couple of the fluoroscopic views for implantation. You can save that and share that with your heart team. And of course, you can save that as well for your remensal session. So I hope you find this helpful. The Edwards pericardial valve is probably one of the easiest valve to measure and determine for mitral valve in valve feasibility and workout. Hope this is helpful to you and see you next time.